Hi everybody, welcome to Do You Believe on ParanormalZone.tv. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, would you please um, uh, give my show a like and for all the new uh, viewers to the show, thanks for joining us and would you please subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Now tonight I am so excited. I've been wanting to do a show on the Skinwalker Ranch for at least two years. And I have an awesome guest with us tonight, and it is Antonio Paris, and he is the uh, director of Aerial Phenomena Investigations Team. And uh, but before, um, uh, well, uh, you know what? We'll let An Antonio talk. Hey, Antonio, here. Um, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on board, and I am really excited about the, this topic here tonight. Oh my God, Anthony, I, I, Antonio, I'm so excited about this. Now, I, I read that um, the Skinwalker Ranch is also known as the Sherman Ranch, and it's a UFO ranch that's um, a bizarre UFO folklore, legends, myths, curses, and it's a smorgasbord of UFO activity cryptozoology activity, and unknown entities that seem to be intelligent. Now, An uh, Antonio, before we start talking about the Skinwalker Ranch, would you please uh, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I, a couple of years ago, I, you know, actually, I was always interested in, uh, in UFO phenomena. And I just, you know, years ago, I really didn't have the time to actually uh, do the things I wanted to do regarding uh, that hobby. And then after I got out of the military, I decided to go to grad school. And it was in grad school when I was studying uh, astronomy and astrophysics that the topic of uh, other life in the universe came up. And that's when the, the, the topic kind of came back. So as I graduated grad school, I decided to join uh, the local MUFON group and, and see what they were doing. And I did that for about a year, and I just didn't feel that I was getting the training or, or the skills that I wanted uh, as a serious investigator. So I just went out and recruited my own team called Aerial Phenomena. Uh, it was originally out of Washington, D.C., and uh, the team spread a bit uh, to about 15 uh, investigators right now throughout the United States and a couple overseas. Mm -hmm. And basically, what we've been doing for the last four or five years is looking at not only UFO phenomena, but specific UFO cases. You know, as a small team that's slightly funded, uh, we're not able to look at the hundreds of cases that come in a, uh, on a monthly basis. So we, we look at only special cases, um, and, and that's through a triage system that we have. Uh, so we only investigate cases that are very recent, that are about a year old, that have multiple witnesses, that there's some type of evidence, whether it's photographic or whether it's video, um, that it happened in the daytime. We are not in the business of chasing little lights in the sky at nighttime. Uh, that's not what we do. And the fifth one, which is kind of sometimes uh, something we can play with, uh, is we don't want to investigate any cases that happen near a military base. Uh, and that's for many reasons, but the most important reason is they're just not going to cooperate, and access to the base is usually limited in scope. Mm -hmm. So if we stick to those five criteria, we can easily uh, concentrate on on cases that we have our best efforts uh, in coming, coming to some type of conclusion. How did you uh, get interested in the uh, Skinwalker Ranch? Uh, basically, uh, the intent was to look at the UFO phenomena there uh, itself. We were not uh, that interested in looking at the other phenomena. The other, and I like to use the word alleged phenomena, uh, which is the, the, the shapeshifter, uh, alleged entities there, paranormal activity, you name it. It's a whole smorgasbord of, of, of paranormal activity there. Uh, so what drew us there was that after after doing some interviews with people who have allegedly seen a black triangular UFO um, mm. and alleged extraterrestrials, uh, we decided to go out there and and meet some of the uh, the paranormal investigators out there that already look at this. You know, guys like Ryan Skinner and and Ryan Burns, uh, John Alexander, who's a great friend of mine, who worked with NIDS out there originally. Uh, 
looking at the phenomenon. And that's what drove us out there, you know, the interest of UFO activity at Skinwalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. Um, so who owns that ranch? Right now, right now, uh, the, the technically it's still owned by uh, a guy named Robert Brigolo. Uh, and that's as recent as last year when we found the uh, tax records uh, for the area. And it's still listed as uh, as Bigelow under the uh, the Utah tax records. Oh, it is. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, it's my understanding, however, that the the ranch is really not used anymore. Um, before we went out there, we spoke with uh, Colonel John Alexander, who wrote the book, uh, who actually helped write the book Skinwalker Ranch. Um, he told us that uh, there's really no other activity out there anymore. Uh, that it that it is abandoned. Um, and that it is, there is a security uh, company out there that, that protects the ranch. So we went out there, when we went out there, one of the things that surprised me was that uh, there was activity out there for a ranch that was deserted, uh, very high profile security. Um, we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, a security team out there that operates 24 hours a day using all types of equipment, including night vision. Uh, they actually harassed us out there while we were out there. We were not on the property itself. We were just right outside of it. And we were followed by private security. We were harassed uh, by private security. Uh, but that's the extent of the harassment. They really can't do much out, outside of it. Um, and there's trip wires. There's uh, infrared cameras that protect the, uh, the ranch. And spotlights. If you get too close to it, like we did, um, they have these... these these huge spotlights that kind of attempt to blind you as you get too close to to the entrance. So for a ranch that's supposed to be deserted and uh, kind of no activity, uh, we kind of saw the ladder. There was a lot of activity there. Uh huh. What? So, so what do you think's going on out there? We don't know. I, I don't like to speculate too much, and I'm not a big fan of the conspiracies. You know, I've heard it all while I was out there. We we were able to interview. I think close to 30 different uh, neighbors. Uh, we even uh, interviewed the local sheriff, the uh, the local uh, Native American uh, police there as well. And we heard it all. We heard we heard everything from there's nothing going on uh, to there's government classified work going on um, to uh, classified work regarding portals. Uh, these portals that allegedly uh, things come in and out. Um, so we, we've heard it all. We've heard, we even heard, uh, uh, classified work on, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum and radio uh, spectrum and things like that. Uh, and if that's the case, that's, you know, we didn't see any of that. It's a very small ranch. Um, it's a, uh, just a couple of buildings there. Um, so others would say, you know what, it's all underground. Uh, the, oh. the, the ranch is just the entrance, but... You know that's conjecture, and uh, we we can only speculate as far as what we actually can see, um, and that's what I do as a scientist and as an investigator. Uh, we can only uh, investigate what we can see, so we, we can't speculate too much. <coughs> it's exciting and it's fun to speculate on what could be there, but the evidence uh, was lackluster. Do you um do you think it's underground then? I don't know. I don't know. Um, the, there are stories from the neighbors that the activity is, is underground. Um, I, I would venture to guess it is a possibility. Uh, the government uh, and a lot of military bases do have underground facilities uh, to, to protect their R&D. You know? and that, that, that is a possibility. That's something that I can, I can argue. Um, do you, now there's a lot of, now that land is, uh, American Indian land, isn't it? I'm sorry, say that again? The land belong, uh, is, was once American Indians, uh, Navajo? Actually, yeah, right, right in the, right, the, right outside the gate is the Ute, uh, res- reservation. It's got a little bit of Navajo behind it as well. Um, so there's a lot of history behind it. If you saw the documentary we did, yeah. there is a lot of Native American history there. Um, and there is another legend. There's a legend that, uh, I believe it was the Navajos. The Navajos slaughtered a troop of, of, uh, Buffalo soldiers, uh, you know, after the Civil War. And that the paranormal activity could, could be coming from, uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that catastrophe. Now the Ute, uh, Indians, um, 
there's a canyon that called the Nine Mile Canyon. Sure. And uh, I on your um, documentary video, you have um, you you captured pictures of the petroglyphs. Petroglyphs. Yeah. Uh, one of the fir as an investigator, we uh, one of the first things that we did was to go out and well, the the, the theory was that from Skinwalker Ranch, which is a little bit up north, to where Sago Canyon is, which is south, uh, that line from the ranch to the to the petroglyphs is called the path of the Skinwalker, and that there's allegedly been uh, activity along that path. So the intent was to go south and look at the petroglyphs, and you know, you, you know, I, I'm looking at some of the uh, the comments there. Uh, you know, there, there's a difference between being a, a, uh, a an investigator who's, you know, by the way, I'm a credential investigator, uh, and and being closed-minded and open-minded. Uh, there's two ends of the spectrum. There is the believer who just covers his ears and says, you know what, aliens exist, I don't care, I don't need the proof. And then the other end of the spectrum is the person who says, aliens don't exist, I don't need to look at anything, uh, the universe is, is, is closed. I'm not, I know those two. Uh, I am as open-minded, uh, as centered as you can be. My goal is to look for evidence, uh, investigate that evidence, and that's it. My goal is not to chase stories. Uh, I'm not in the in the hugging business, um, and, and it's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. That's what I do as an investigator, um, and that's the go. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, there's the misconception of the word debunker. That's not what we do uh, because we investigate something, and there's no proof. That's not called debunking. That's mm -hmm. called the investigative process. Uh, there are a lot of debunkers out there, and, and I think that's bad. I'm uh, okay. back back to the Skinwalker. The Skinwalker is it's a really neat place, and if you saw the documentary, we saw some stuff we could not explain. Um, but that doesn't mean I jump the line and say, "Oh my God, that's aliens," or, or mm -hmm. "That's that's paranormal." Uh, a strange light in the sky and a couple of strange noises. That's all it is, and one event is not enough to come with a uh, responsible conclusion. Mm -hmm. Now, when you went into the uh, cave, and you saw the uh, the uh, this one in particular, this absolutely fascinating, and it was drawn by ancient Ute. Ute, how do you yes. pronounce Ute or Ute? Uh, it's called Ute. Ute. Okay, they have they have carved uh, an alien, and and is that in the rock? Well, you know what? It's a very interesting drawing, and I'm very, uh, I'm always open-minded to what they were trying to interpret. You know, you've got an army of anthropologists that'll say no, um, that the, the Native Americans, when they wanted to portray or promote the somebody important in their tribe, they would always have their bigger eyes and big heads. And then the other end of the spectrum, someone could say that, oh no, that has to, that has to be aliens. This is where I need your audience to understand. Our perception of what an alien would look like is, is something that I call anthropomorphic bias. Um, and that is because we, we, we tend to think that aliens have to look like us. Uh, you know, if you look at, the, at that petroglyph right there, uh, it has two eyes um, and it has two arms, two legs. It's a humanoid. And why do aliens have to look like humanoids? Uh, I, as a planetary scientist and, and an astronomer, any life in the universe would be probably something that's radically different from what we understand. We cannot even conceive what something would look like. Um, for, something that, for something to look like us, you know, with, with a nose, two eyes, two ears, a mouth, and walk like us, um, would have to have a, a, a planetary system that's identical to ours. We're talking about atmospheres. We're talking about uh, gravitational uh, influence. That is probably rare, even in our you know. Mm -hmm. Versus theorists coming. Well, no, uh, aliens were here before us, and they seeded us, etc. Uh, that's all great. Uh, my interest in the petroglyphs is is that uh, that they do look interesting, and that uh, they they are a mystery. 
um, we can't speculate too much on what it is, um, even though it's interesting. It is. It, uh, that was fascinating. <clears throat> um, by the way, would you just tell them where they can get that? Uh, you're still selling that documentary that you did? Oh, yeah. It's on uh, primarily Amazon. They can watch it. They can uh, get it there. Now, okay. It used to be called the Sherman Ranch. Was he the original owner? Uh, he was the owner in the 90s, and uh, it did belong to his family. My, There's so many legends and stories to what happened. Um, it's my... Uh, from what I, the research we did is that he did sell the ranch, um, and then the Nids took over. I believe it was the late '90s to the early 2000s. Uh, if if no one knows what Nids is, uh, that was the National Institute for Discovery Science uh, that was funded by Bigelow, mm -hmm. and it was a a, collect, a group of scientists that went out there and tried to study the phenomena. Um, it's my understanding that it that was shut down after a few years because Nids. NIDS, although did investigate some really cool, interesting uh, events, their conclusion was that uh, science, and this is interesting, that science at the time was not equipped to study the, the phenomena that was observed. And so now, so is, is it supposed to be um, a vacant ranch? They're not using it for anything? It's my, yeah, it's, it's my understanding that there is the only, there's a, uh, Someone that, that's responsible for the ranch right now is there just to maintain it, um, and there's no actual activity there uh, other than the, uh, the security that's been that's contracted there uh, to, to, to uh, you know, provide security. Here's my interest, and this is for all the conspiracy guys out there. It is interesting that the, uh, uh, the security that, that's providing um, the protection of the ranch is the same uh, group that is right now also providing security over at uh, uh, the Nellis Range, uh, other known as Area 51. Now, that's really interesting, Antonio. Why? Why? I don't know. I, I can only, I can only <laughs> you know, uh, speculate on so many reasons why. Uh, it could be that uh, Robert Brigolo owns uh, a, a part of the company that provides security, and thus it's, it's, that's the way it's contracted. Um, or it could be that, that there's something going on there, that there, you know, um, that the security, the level of security that's required there, uh, it, it, it requires a special, uh, contracted team. And these guys, when I saw them out there, you could tell they were former military, uh, just by the way they talked and walked and stuff like that. So now what, what about this, um, now you 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 do aerial. Tell us about that. The aerial photography that you do. Um. Uh. Basically, the the goal of us is is, is to collect and sometimes is if we have enough uh, lead time is to set up equipment out there, uh, various types of equipment, whether it's night vision or infrared, uh, to try to at least record uh, activity that's allegedly going on out there. And we got, we did get lucky. If you look mm -hmm. at the uh, at the DVD, the documentary, uh, we did catch something. We we, we saw a strange. Uh, I like to call it an orb or a mysterious light that appeared uh, slightly over the ranch. Uh, you know, we know it wasn't an aircraft. We know it wasn't a flashlight. We know it wasn't uh, something hanging in a string, but a, a nice big light uh, did pop up for about two, three seconds and flashed out uh, just as fast as it came out. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And we also had a couple occasions where um, I was there with, uh, we worked in teams um, and we saw like, some strange shadows with, with, with uh, they were pretty tall. We're talking about shadows that would pass right next to me over my shoulder with no, uh, with nothing physical to attribute that shadow. Now, <clears throat> What about the uh, f the folklore with the uh, the skinwalkers, the shapeshifters? Yeah, the the uh, the history of the skinwalker is that, and this comes mostly from the Navajo legend, that uh, if someone murdered a family member, then they were cursed to be a, a shapeshifter, and that they can shape themselves uh, into. 
uh, one of various forms, including a werewolf, a dog, uh, you name it, even snakes. And that's the legend. The legend is uh, that that area is full of the, the, those skinwalkers. Um, one of the persons that we investigated, out, excuse me, we interviewed out there, um, alleges that he came in contact uh, with a skinwalker, that he was driving uh, and picked up a hitchhiker. And as soon as he the hitchhiker went into his pickup truck, uh, he felt dizzy, he began to cry, um, and he felt confused, and every time he tried to look over to the hitchhiker, he couldn't see their face, uh, like their face was, uh, all, he, all he could see was the eyes, and it was kind of like the picture you have right there, uh, up on them, and then all he remembers is kind of, uh, blanking out and passing out, and then being awoken, I believe it was by a sheriff, or some local enforcement woke him up, and uh, he was just dazed and confused, uh, and I thought that was interesting. Now, when you went on to the, when you went, you were, now, how far is uh, Ryan Burns from Skinwalker Ranch? He is about, I'd say about 10 minutes away. It's a very, relatively short drive. Uh, he's in the town next door uh, to Roosevelt, and it was a, it was an easy drive for us. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, during this interview, he gave you a lot of information, and I have, I, and I have some pictures from that interview, uh, sure. and the pictures that he had shared with you. He also gave you a description of um, a skinwalker, which I I see uh, cherish. Your wife is holding um, um, some kind of a replica in her hand of this skinwalker that was seen. Yeah, um, what what he was, I believe he got that, uh, I forgot where he got that from, I think it was a conference or, or a local hobby shop, but what he was trying to tell us is that, uh, that he necessarily didn't see a skinwalker uh, on multiple occasions, but that he saw a werewolf, um, a humanoid type werewolf that was uh, walking around in signs, and that's what he was trying to tell us, that what, that's something that we could potentially see. And a couple of nights we went out um, and with him, and we went up to uh, one of the uh, ridges uh, alongside the, the Ute Reservation, and and he showed us what what, what purported to be uh, footprints from the uh, from the werewolf. Now, uh, I have to take that with a grain of salt as an investigator. You know that could have been. Uh, just about anything, or it could have been someone else uh, that were placing it there. So it's kind of like chasing Bigfoot. You, you've got footprints, but we don't know who put them there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, it's interesting. You know, he's not the only one to tell us that he's seen the, that thing in the area. We, but some of the witnesses, uh, excuse me, some of the neighbors that we talked to, uh, they actually they told us that they've uh, they've seen uh, that type of entity in the area. Mm-hmm. Now also. Besides a skinwalker, um, is there is a uh, is it, it looks like uh, could it, actually it looks like Bigfoot to me. I'm showing it from Ryan Burns, an alleged yeah. entity. There are a whole string of different types of entities that have been allegedly seen out there. We're talking about uh, uh, the werewolf. We're talking about Bigfoot. We're talking about uh, extraterrestrials. The skinwalker himself. Uh, even, uh, I forgot the name he used, but something that looked like a midget, uh, that was very distraughting, um, and scary, uh, to black, black, uh, silhouettes kind of moving in, in, in a, uh, very slow fashion. I think that's it right there. Um, so, uh, it, from a cryptozoology perspective, uh, for those of the people interested in that, of that is the, that is, uh, that is the Mecca, you know, if, if you want to go out there and hopefully see something like this, that would be uh, a good place to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, um, you did an aerial view um, uh, over the ranch, and what is the circle, the eye circle over the ranch? Oh, yeah, that's just a uh, an irrigation uh, that's used. You can find that in any farm. Uh, that's just used for irrigation. That's not a... Oh, it's... It's really not a big deal. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Now, there also have been reports of um, cattle mutilation. Yeah, that there's been everything from cattle mutilation to uh, strange... Uh, they call them pixie circles or eye circles. 
uh, strange noises. Um, we're talking about like strange high fric low frequency noises. There's your eye circle. Um, a whole it's it's this is why I really this is this is one of the uh, I guess um, uh, I'm trying to look for a good work. One of the uh, reasons behind what's going on here. There is a uh, uh, something called at least what we've been told is called the uh, an entity out there that can shape shift itself to whatever it wants. Um, and this can be the the uh, the alien itself, the Bigfoot, the werewolf, um, and that it, it can shape shift itself to whatever you want it to be. So it has a a uh, preconceived notion before you even go out there uh, of what is it you want to see, and that's what you're going to see. Um, and uh, the the term that some of the people out there use is called a precognitive sentient phenomena. Um, that it knows you're going out there. Uh, if you want to see a alien, that's what it's going to shape shift itself into. If you want to see a UFO, that's what it's going to shape shift itself to. So all these things that have been seen out there is allegedly just one thing. Uh, and John Alexander uh, attributed this thing kind of like the trickster, that the trickster, uh, this entity. Um, uh, can do whatever it wants before uh, you even arrive there. And one of the coolest things, one of the coolest things that happened to us was that um, bef we left the hotel, uh, and as a good investigator, I triple checked all the batteries and make sure that everything was working, cameras, microphones, all that good stuff. And when we got to the ranch within, I think within 30 seconds, uh, most of our equipment died on the spot. Um, we're talking about our cell phones, uh, our cameras, uh, most of our lights, uh, a couple of things uh, survived. And we were kind of stumped by that. We really had no reason, we really had no explanation for what happened. So we went out to the hotel again, uh, charged everything, came back and it worked fine the second time. And some people say, well, that was the, the, the trickster. Uh, he knew you were coming. Really? Oh, interesting. Oh, now, also... Now, now, now there Go is ahead. a possible explanation for that, too. Uh, uh, we did research, and they, uh, most of our stuff was lithium batteries. And lithium batteries, if you go from low altitude to high altitude uh, too quick, they will die really fast. So there's your scientific uh, explanation. Um, uh, we have lithium batteries that died out in the high altitude really quick. Or we can go towards the, the more elaborate excuse um, that it was the, uh, the sentient phenomenon. Mm -hmm. What now I, I do have um, on your investigation, you did a, what, a 48 hour investigation? Uh, uh, we were there. Well, no, the investigation started months before, uh, including uh, sending a couple of recon people out there to do interviews, and then we personally went out there for three days. And uh, I'm showing the uh, night vision, um, some of your night vision shots. Yeah. This one started at 1:30 a.m., and then uh, also, you finally saw activity at the at the ranch. The lights went on. Yeah, it was, uh, okay, but the activity actually started before that. Um, as it got dark, we there is a place that's public property where you can actually stay there. And it's really close to the ranch. We're talking about less than, uh, less than a mile. And uh, as we were driving there, we had a vehicle follow us. And the first thing that came to my mind, okay, that's, uh, that's security following us. And so they followed us. Um, that's called, uh, in my old occupation, that's called harassment surveillance. Mm. And so they follow us around. And then we turn the tables on them. We'd follow them and, and use our high beams to, to pee them off as well. Um, but then around, it was around midnight, they, they knew we were using night vision equipment. And uh, there's something called counter surveillance where they would flash high beams at your equipment to blind you. Oh, um, that's... They did, they did that frequently throughout the night. Um, they, As soon as we turned on our night vision, which runs under infrared, they can see that, and they would have these huge spotlights, and they would blind us intentionally. Uh, so we got smart. What we did was we split up, 
uh, to three different parts of the uh, of the ranch where they couldn't do that. They only had one spotlight, and we intentionally would would come to one part of the the perimeter and and show our presence so they can blind us there with the intent that it was the other two investigators at the other end were actually doing the filming and looking for evidence. Now, during that that same night at about 2 o'clock in the morning, is that that's when you uh, were able to capture what looks like um, a strange light? Yeah, so it was, we had just actually came down from uh, that ridge uh, where we saw the, uh, that strange, well, we saw the alleged footprints and we had just had the camera on and and uh ryan was talking about all you know strange ufos and activity and stuff like that and it's really dark out there you know if you shut the night vision stuff off and we saw it we saw the strange light kind of just like uh it's not something that turned on it's not something that it kind of opened kind of a light that just went from small to big um, and was there for about three, four seconds, and then it kind of just fizzled away really quick. Uh, we couldn't, it could have been anything, we couldn't attribute to anything, uh, but we didn't see any activity, we didn't see any cars, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely a high altitude, um, it wasn't on a ridge line or anything like that, but very interesting. Now also, what about, um, Ryan Burns talks about there's an alleged portal on that land? Yeah, you know, uh, he, he sent us a video before we went out there. We analyzed the video. There's not much we can see. Uh, it is a, a light that turns on, um, and then you can, be, you know, you, can, you have to use your imagination to, to, if you want to analyze it that way, and you see these little pixelated lights kind of come out of that. Um, that could be anything. It is interesting. It does look like a light opening up and things coming out. Um, but uh, we actually tried to replicate that. Uh -huh. So there it is. We, 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 we put a, a huge spotlight like that. And we had guys walk around with flashlights in front of the spotlight to kind of replicate that. We kind of got it. Um, but I don't think that's what, we, what he saw. Um, right now, it's a light with two little lights coming out. It's not a portal to me. What about this uh, black triangle UFO? Yeah, here's that's my biggest interest. Um, one of my one of the big reasons I went out to uh, to to go out to Utah is because the research I did is that um, a lot of the activity out at Nellis, uh, the so-called Area Fifty One, has kind of died down, and the activity in Utah has increased. Now. It, it, the research is, is kind of shaping towards that uh, a lot of the R&D that was happening at, uh, at the Nellis Range has now moved up to the, the proving grounds up at Utah. Um, so it doesn't take a genius to figure out, okay, the, the testing has kind of slowed down in Nellis and the activities have increased in Utah. So uh, it could be that the government and the military have, be, have stepped up their R&D in Utah which is corresponding with the increase of UFO reports in Utah. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of drove us out there. So we went out there, um, and uh, it, we're, we're being told that there's been a, a nice, good number of sightings out there regarding the black triangles. We didn't see any, um, but some of the people that we did interview out there did see allegedly uh, a black triangle. How many? So the are the other people that you did interview um, regarding the Skinwalker Ranch? Did they give you anything else um, that was strong just, enough for you to want to go out there and 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 check those uh, out? Let me let me let me uh, let me go back a, a second. It's okay. interesting that I would interview one neighbor, right? Yeah. And who's been there for thirty years, and he's telling me that he's seen so much stuff. And then I go right next door to the next guy who's been there thirty years as well, and he's seen nothing. In his entire life, really, and that was kind of the pattern that we saw up there. Was that for every person that saw something, or, or allegedly saw something, there is another interview, uh, interviewee that's that's been there all his life and has seen nothing. And he just called, you know, a lot of them told us it's all baloney. It's it's nothing. It's hoaxes. 
Um, and and then there's the other end of the spectrum are people that saw a lot of things out there. Well, maybe Antonio, maybe because he lives in that area, he doesn't want to bring any attention to it. It could be. It could. I, I would. I would argue that could be a possibility. But when you interview forty or fifty people, uh, if they're all, then it becomes a conspiracy if they're all trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now the military, the military being up there. Now you you called it the URS security. What does URS stand for? Uh, I don't know. We can Google that up. I I knew it at once. The company uh, and. They used to be called uh, EG&G, I think. Um, that was the, the, the big company out of Area 51. Uh, yeah, URS Corporation, there it is. Um, and they, I think it was just a few years ago, that they switched their names to URS. Oh. And, and that's what really f I found interesting. I was like, okay, we got a company that I know because we can see all the paperwork, all the paper trail is providing security over at Nellis Range, and they provide security all over the place. We're not just talking about Area 51. Um, and they're also providing security at a private ranch, which is interesting. So it's not it's not a public military base. It's not a public uh, facility that's being protected. It's a uh, private ranch for intents and purposes. So why is a defense contractor providing security at a private ranch. Is that ranch also within the same location of Skinwalker Ranch? Say that again? Is that lo that other ranch, is that close to the Skinwalker Ranch? No, the Skinwalker Ranch is the one that's being oh. uh, protected by oh, okay. the, the, the defense contractors. Yeah, that is, that is very, that has my suspicion up. I would love <laughs> to know why, really, why? Why are they there? If nobody's living there, what are they hiding? What's what's going on over there? Very, you know, it, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna step back for one second. When sure. we went out and interviewed uh, a witness that was really close to, I would say about five miles from the Skinwalker Ranch, um, and I really haven't looked into this too much because it's out of the scope of UFOs. There was an allegedly a Russian tycoon, I believe. Yes, a Russian tycoon, a rich billionaire, who bought uh, a couple hundred acres of land uh, not too far from the ranch. Um, and it is alleged that he bought the ranch because it is a portal also. Um, and that uh, the portal, here's where it becomes now even more interesting. Um, the army uh, is now leasing that land. I, I, one of the uh, engineering co uh, uh, companies is uh, now leasing that land uh, from the Russian tycoon. So here we have, uh, and I like to use the word allegedly because I really haven't seen uh, any paperwork to back that up. So we have a uh, Russian tycoon who bought land uh, not too far from the reservation. Uh, this land allegedly is a portal. I don't know what portal, what they mean by portal. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the army is now uh, leasing this land from the Russian tycoon. Wow. Now, that really must get your suspicions up. It does. It does. But I need your viewers to understand, uh, I love this kind of stuff. Yeah, I me too. A, I, love a, <laughs> I love a good conspiracy just like everyone else. But that's not the intent of a real phenomenon investigations team. Our, team our, our goal is we're not the X-Files. We're, we're not out chasing Chupacabras, uh, Bigfoot, uh, the New Jersey Devil. Our goal is limited in scope. Uh, we're talking about UFOs, uh, we're talking about uh, something physical, an actual craft that we can investigate, and that's the goal of a real phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is when I hear these stories, whether it's paranormal, cryptozoology, I pass that stuff to other teams that do that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of teams in Utah, New Mexico that I, that I collaborate with, so when I hear something like that, I pass that on to them, kind of we network these cases out. We just don't put them under the rug or try to hide them. Um, and I've had people that said thanks and they've, they've taken that torch and gone out and done, and done those investigations. Mm -hmm. Also in that um, video of yours, um, I think it was Ryan Burns that said uh, something about yeah. the um, refrigerator shaped yeah. UFO are the most dangerous. Why is that? 
I don't. He really didn't elaborate too much. He said that there's all different types of UFO activity out there, including small black triangles the size of refrigerators. I think that's what he was trying to say. Uh, very small black triangles. Um, he his spec he speculated on that those could have been uh, either drones or uh, kind of like reconnaissance uh, craft from motherships. Um, so uh, great guy. I believe uh, a good portion of his stories, uh, but there's really no uh, physical evidence to back it up. Um, I, I tell everyone, I'm not in the hugging business. I'm not in the, you know, I believe you business. Um, great stories, um, but physical evidence is what's going to win the jury. Now, I also have an image taken off of your video of an alleged creature uh, that was captured near the ranch. And this yeah. was from an eyewitness. It's kind yeah, of yeah, hard to see. About the, uh, it kind of looks like a goblin or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we did some background in that. And it's, it's, it's allegedly from the area. Uh, and, you know, we, we traced it back to, to Utah as, as much as we could. Um, we spoke with the originators of that. And... It was a great story uh, that we wanted to add to to uh, the documentary. So, what did you think when you saw that? Well, I I didn't see it. I oh. see the video. I, <laughs> oh. What I see yeah. is, uh, you know. Uh, well, when you video, saw the video, I mean, what did you think? I thought it was interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I I can't. I don't know if that's a guy with a mask. I don't know if that's a, a hoax. Um, the, but the guy, uh, the person who shot it, sounded sincere to me. Um, I did some background checks on him. It didn't seem like it, he was a, pr a prankster, a hoaxer. Um, but it was great. It's a great addition to the documentary. Um, if somebody out there listening has more information or thinks it's a prank or uh, or has more to elaborate on it, man, that would be great. Because you know, all, all, everybody out there that's listening right now, uh, I'm sure they're interested in this kind of stuff. And they have, I'm not an expert. You know, people say, oh my God, you're, you're a UFO expert paranormal expert. I'm not. I'm an investigator, limited in scope, and uh, I'm, I'm looking for uh, physical evidence to substantiate stories. Oh. That's to go. I'm not out to debunk. I'm not out to belittle. Um, I'm not going to travel uh, 5,000 miles and spend thousands of dollars to hear stories. Oh. Uh, so, if those cases meet the scope and the criteria that I mentioned earlier, uh, then then we will risk it and go out there. That's 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 the intent of what most investigators do. Now you weren't able to get on the land. Were you off to the side of the land? I don't they were The close the closest that you can get is uh, I would venture to say just under a mile. Okay. And that's really close because the place we're on a hilltop. And on that hilltop has a great advantage point to look down towards uh, the ranch itself. And when you're using high-powered uh, lenses, um, it's it's really not a big deal. You can, you can see really close. I mean, you can you can uh, get a really good zoom of the actual ranch itself, the house. And that's the closest anybody can get to that ranch. Is that correct? I'm sorry, said it again. It, and that's the closest anybody can get to that ranch. Yes, that is the closest. Oh my God! So, what were the Sherman people doing? Were they were they did they are they the ones that had the cattle mutilations when they owned the ranch? Um, no, that was mainly during the uh, the uh, the NIDS investigations. The most of the Shermans, what they saw was the werewolf itself, um, uh, some of the black triangles, and I think in the book also mentioned a uh, UFO with a couple of entities walking around. <laughs> they call them entities, not actually uh, uh, extraterrestrials. Yeah. Um, so when the Sherman ran, when the Sherman family had that ranch, what were they doing on the ranch? Do you know? What they were just living there, or what were they doing with that ranch? Uh, it's, my, it's, it's my understanding that they just went through living hell time uh, for the ten or so fifteen years that they were there. Uh, would would living in hell um and when the opportunity came to sell the the, the ranch they they took the offer and, and and that's it they left 
And so nobody, like, like, like Dolce, uh, New Mexico, with the underground facility, people have been spilling their guts about that facility. Do you think there's going to come a time where those, those, there will be people that will also talk about the Skinwalker Ranch and, and tell the real, the real story? It, it is a possibility. You know, interviewing a, an outsider, someone who's from the area, and, uh, and interviewing somebody that actually is from the ranch there now is two different things. I, I'm hopeful that one day someone that actually is working there recently, including the, the security guards, that they didn't see anything because it's so compartmented, that would be a great, great investigation. Um, you know, evidence is, is th here is a big difference. I've, you know, there's a difference between, and I, I hate this because people think that anecdotal evidence is enough is enough to make something real. It's not. You know, there is a difference between a lot of anecdotal evidence and a lot of anecdotal information. And two huge different things. You can't, you can only uh, analyze so much investigation before you attempt to, to provide a synopsis, an analytical conclusion. Uh, and that's what uh, UFO phenomena is a little different than the paranormal. Um, the, when it comes to UFOs, it's kind of you're at the crime scene of something that already happened. Uh, a witness saw something, um, and you're there to take the story, and maybe that's, that's about it. Uh, I like uh, my colleagues in the paranormal field because they are in the... Uh, I guess the uh, the live investigations where they, they use their equipment and attempt to uh, find uh, uh, current evidence. You see these shows and some of these groups that I work with uh, have their equipment and they're recording stuff in the real time. You know, whether it's uh, uh, voices or shadows and things like that. Real time stuff. Um, and that's cool. And unfortunately, that's not the way UFOs works. Uh, it's always post, historic. Uh, usually very historic. It's something that I saw 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's very rarely something I saw yesterday, and here's the evidence. Um, there are a lot of great stories out there. I have sat down with witnesses that I found very credible, very reliable. And there's two different things. Credibility and reliability are two different things. And I have left interviews with, with, the, with the notion this guy saw something. I believe him. Um, and that's where the story ends. Unfortunately, there's no evidence to back it up. So, and this comes with any type of witness. It, there's a huge misconception that it had, if, it's a, if it's a police officer, if it's an astronaut, if it's a four-star general, it must have happened. Well, guess what? For every astronaut and, and four-star general that I know that's credible, there's one out there that's not credible and dishonest. We've all seen cops go to jail. We've seen astronauts go to jail. We've seen generals go to jail uh, for being dishonest. So you can't take a title and a position for granted and automatically assume, especially, I love these deathbed confessions, uh, that something actually happened. So you have to be careful. And for everybody listening out there, uh, as a scientist, you know, that's what I do. I'm a scientist, I'm a professor of, of astrophysics. Uh, I understand that, that, that everyone out there wants to believe and that you don't need physical proof to, to believe in something. That's great. But as a scientist, I follow a scientific process. That process starts from building a hypothesis, uh, looking at phenomena, replicating phenomena, and then coming towards an analytical conclusion. When it comes to UFOs and the paranormal, there's certain steps in that process that you cannot do. That doesn't mean UFOs don't exist. That doesn't mean aliens doesn't exist, but from a scientific process and a scientific method, uh, ufology falls short and the paranormal falls short as well. I'm hopeful that hopefully in the future some other genius uh, could come up with a different process uh, to prove aliens exist, to prove UFOs exist, to prove that uh, the skinwalker exists. But right now, we have a lot of stories. Um, we got a lot of photos, and, if you, and for those people who are looking at these photos, they're always fuzzy. They're always kind of, uh, you really can't tell what it is. Um, and, and pareidolia kicks in. Some people see a, a, a Bigfoot, some people see a smudge. Um, so that's not going to work in a court of law. 
what is uh, there really so there really isn't much on the skinwalker ranch that's been released it's been you and robert burns and, and ryan burns and and ryan skinner is there anyone uh, oh and george well, knapp you, I, I, there is a lot it's just there's not a lot that's been posted um uh from my understanding is that place every single weekend it is, it is just full with paranormal investigators. Um, and one of the sheriffs that we interview out there um, explained to us that, listen, you know, he's very respectful to us. He says, listen, every single weekend someone comes out there from a paranormal team, from a TV show, always trying to record something uh, or, or, or trying to do an investigation. So there is a lot of teams that are actually going out there. I think during the winter it slows down because it gets really cold, a lot of ice and snow. Uh -huh. um, but during the summer, I hear there's just a, 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 an army of, of investigators that go out there on a weekly basis. Have you seen much information, po uh, any evidence posted by other groups? No, I don't. I, I, I troll the YouTube channels just like you do and everybody on this uh, show that's watching now. Uh, that's what a good investigator does. Um, there was, there's just not much. Mm -hmm. I know. I couldn't find, I couldn't find much on it. There's not, there's not because, uh, like I said, it's, it's, if the, if the sentient phenomena exists and he's real, uh, it could be multiple reasons why it's not showing itself to, to other groups out there. Antonio, what, have you experienced or seen anything that was just so bizarre uh i i wouldn't say bizarre you know i i i've seen a couple of strange lights i've seen a couple of strange things move here and there uh even in my own home i've seen i heard a couple of strange sounds um but it doesn't really excite me i'm like okay what is that um and it never replicates itself again so you have to be careful mm -hmm. what about on your investigations though uh, no, the closest was the Skinwalker, where we saw the strange lights and the shadows. But, you know, again, a, a one-time encounter uh, is not enough to come to a, a conclusion. You have to be careful. There's a lot of people that will go out there, they'll see a strange light, and they'll, they'll oh my God, it has to be aliens, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, if a, uh, Nothing can move that fast. I don't know of any aircraft that can move in that fashion. It has to be aliens. You have to be careful with that type of, uh, that type of conclusions. Um, unless you are an expert in every single aircraft that's out there, including classified ones, uh, you, you know it's all it's all opinion and conjecture at, at its best. Um, so you have to be careful with that. Are you interested in uh, ever going back there again? We are. We we're, we're trying to go back out there again, again, uh, probably maybe this summer or perhaps uh, early next this fall coming up. Uh, Again, there, there has to be enough data and information for us to go out there. But Ryan did invite us to go back out there again. Um, so we'll see what our schedules are like before we go out there. So when you, when you did your aerial photographs, you, uh, obviously it was an airplane? No, it was a small little drones that Ryan has that, I, that uh, he can fly around and, and use a webcam to take some photos, which is pretty cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> now what? I, oh, I like to. There's a guy. I don't like to mention names, but I love some of the comments that are being. It's almost historical, historic, hysterical. Uh, trying to keep my composure, looking at some of the comments. Um, one I like to answer really quickly. Listen, Go guys, ahead. Oh I, sure. I, I love my country. Uh, I joined the military uh, because that was the right thing to do. Um, I'm very patriotic, and. Uh, as a college graduate, one of the it was the army that chose uh, me to go to army intelligence, and that's what I did. I did that for a couple of years, and I got out. Um, there is no conspiracy. I, I, I did counterintelligence for a couple of years, uh, and my specialty was guess what? Chasing terrorists, and it's classified. But I put so many terrorists away in prison uh, that, given the opportunity, they would have killed a lot of Americans here. So as a counterintelligence agent, that's what I did. Uh, I chase terrorists, I put some away, and I go to bed thinking every night that that was the right thing to do. Uh, so there is no conspiracy when it comes to, uh, to counterintelligence out there. Um, love my country. Uh, I didn't want the military to be my life, 
which is why I got out, went to graduate school, and now I am an astronomer. Uh, so let's see the next conspiracy uh, typo that's going on there. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> what about Area 51? Did you also, did you go out? There? Yeah, I went out there as well, and I think uh, on the same page where we sell the, uh, that documentary, there's the Area 51 documentary. The, my goal at Area 51 was to research um, uh, the old school uh, UFO events from the 50s and 60s and the late 40s. It was not necessarily to chase the alleged uh, black, you know, the TR3 or the TRB, whatever they call it now. Um, very interesting place, place, a lot of history behind it. I love Area 51. Um, just, I love, I just love going out there and interviewing people and seeing the kind of things that they see. There's not, uh, there really isn't that much of activity regarding uh, UFOs out there. Um, most people that I did interview, at least, uh, just saw strange aircraft and things like that, um, but not really attributed to uh, extraterrestrials. A lot of the folklore comes from the alleged uh, uh, Bob Lazar stories and things like that of extraterrestrials, but. Uh, uh, Really interesting place. My my personal belief is that a lot of the activity from Area 51 uh, has moved now to uh, the proving grounds up in Utah. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the viewers? Uh, no, listen, man. I am a believer. I would not be wasting my time, wasting my money, because uh, there isn't a secret funding stream out there uh, that we get money from. Uh, a lot of the, the trips and investigations we do and the $20,000 worth of equipment that we have was, was, came out of my pocket. And I wouldn't be wasting my time and my hard-earned money uh, going on a debunking binge. That's, <laughs> I, I, anybody can do that uh, if they wanted to. I really like uh, UFO phenomena. I wish I could do paranormal investigations as well. Um, I have a passion. I really love sitting down with witnesses and, and, uh, and listening to their stories and trying to figure out what they're doing. Uh, and, and this is why I do it. I, 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 I love it. If I didn't believe in extraterrestrials or if I didn't believe in the phenomena, I wouldn't be doing this. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to show the viewers and I did recently your, um, I love your your logo. I absolutely love that API, aerialphenomena.org. Yeah. Now, if they go to that website, what can they find out? Um, the website basically is a, a couple of links, a couple of pages there about some of the cases that we're doing. Um, if we're going to a conference, uh, there's a, a page with uh, hundreds and hundreds of different photos that were either sent to us or uh, some of the ones that I found interesting. Um, and there's a lot of research uh, stuff there too. So if you want to research what are UFOs or one of some of the famous cases that are out there, or if you want to report something, uh, that's there as well. Um, and, but if you really look at the, if you really look at the the website, you can tr you can really see uh, how sincere we are. Um, I want to point out that my team, my team right now is full of all type of belief spectrums. We have people on one end like myself that are skeptics, but we really want to investigate this from a, uh, a, uh, a process. We have people on one end of the spectrum that don't even believe this kind of stuff, okay? Uh, they, their goal is to say, no, it didn't happen. I need those type of people. Also, um, I'm going to show them uh... yeah. The, the DVD and, and a book, Space Science? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell um, them? And then, and then I've got people on my team also that are true believers. Not only true believers, but they themselves have witnessed UFOs. They themselves have seen some strange stuff on them. So the team right now is is really across the board. It's We're talking about all types of belief spectrums. So I'm showing them... Um, the cover of your DVD and what is the space science? Is that a is that a book? Space science um, is a little. Uh, if you look at the first book, Aerial Phenomena, that is uh, uh, fifty cases that we investigated uh, in two thousand twelve, I believe, um, and we show you the investigative process. 
the tools we use, how we do witness interviews, uh, what type of uh, equipment that we use, and some of the analysis that goes behind the, the cases. Space science is a little different. Space science is answering questions if extraterrestrials exist, and if the UFOs that they come here are extraterrestrial, how is it that they get here? Um, if extraterrestrials exist, what are the type of planetary systems they must be from? What are the planetary systems they can't be from? Um, how is it that aliens can land here on Earth and breathe our atmospheres? Yeah. How is it that they can walk here on our gravity? How can um, they? So I want to know. I want to <laughs> know. <laughs> so so um, what type of planetary system would they be from? For them to have the same vision as us, how can they see our spectrum, our frequencies? So, space uh, aerial phenomena is looking at nuts and bolts UFOs. Space science is looking at the extraterrestrial hypothesis. How is it that they can be come here, um, given all the factors involved with with uh, with the cosmos? Do you answer those questions in that book? I, I I try to answer them as best as possible. Yeah. I would love for you to come back and talk about that. <laughs> anytime Just oh me. my god i didn't know I, i'm interested in that um gee our hour is up i know i didn't i don't i didn't want to keep you because i was so thrilled that you decided to uh accept my uh invitation to come on the show um a antonio um it's it was such a pleasure to have you on the show thank you so much um it's just really, and it's nice to meet you finally, because right, I've known right. about you for all these years. Thank you so I just much. Say, uh, close it up. Listen, guys, for everybody that's out there, man, if if you love this stuff and if you believe one way or another, don't let anyone, including people like myself, try to change that 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 uh, perception that you have. Uh, again, my goal is not to change your mind. My goal is not to uh, crap on anybody's belief spectrum. Um, I love a good investigation and conspiracy just as much as everyone, but my goal is to find that evidence to say, okay, guys, here it is. Beyond a reasonable doubt, there's no more There's no more what ifs. Here's the physical evidence. Heck, we don't even have to do these interviews anymore. And that's the goal of every phenomenon. Awesome. Antonio, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. I will uh, get back with you. Um, have you back on the show. I would love to have you talk about that topic. Great. Uh, thanks for having me aboard. And to everybody out there that's watching, uh, I love all you guys, okay? Um, and peace out. Oh, thanks, Anthony. Good night, Antonio. Good night, honey. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Awesome. Let me turn this off. Oh... Oh, hey everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, it was a pleasure to have Antonio. I keep calling him Anthony because of my Anthony Sanchez. I keep forgetting. Hey everybody, thanks for, um, thanks for joining me. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, I want, Dave told me to say hi to everybody. He is on his way to the Seven Sisters Conference. He was invited, and he's also going to be uh, uh, leading in a paranormal investigation, I believe, with Andrea Perrin. Um, you know, John Zaffis loves Dave. That whole group loves Dave, and, and um, so he was invited. He's with Andrea Perrin. He's with uh, George Lopez. He's with Zaffis. The last time he was there, he was there last year, and they had a ball. Dave said he laughed so hard he almost peed his pants. So um, he's going to call me tonight and uh, let me know. Tomorrow the um, uh, that conference starts, but he's, he's on his way there now. Um, I think he was in... Uh, North or South Carolina when I spoke to him last. Um, let's see. Okay, so don't forget. Um, let's see. Don't forget. Um, next uh, Thursday, the Bell Witch. The Bell Witch Caves. And uh, my guest is Willie, Gibbs, Willie Windwalker Gibson. He's a shaman. He did investigate the caves. And actually, he was the first... He was the first um, one to, to investigate that live on uh, CMT. It was a Halloween special. And uh, also, oh, and we're also going to talk about interdimensional beings. 
that's my favorite topic. Also, um, uh, on the 31st, I'm having a second show next week, and that's on a Saturday. And uh, my friend Harvey uh, Althouse, he is a remote viewer, and um, he, he can go back. It's not so much forward, it's going back in time, and he can visit a place. He can draw pictures of, uh, of, of somebody that might be a murder suspect or, or whatever. We're going to talk about the Valeska house. We're going to talk about that uh, uh, stone cross uh, castle uh, off of Clinton Road and some other locations. And he's going to do this all live. So that, that should be great. And um, let's see, what else? We had a we had a lot of people here tonight. Hopefully, um, chat went okay tonight. There's so many names. I was going to do a shout out, and um, I don't know if I can. I'm going to do a shout. Out. I'm going to do a shout out. I try to write the names down, but um, oh my gosh, there's so many people here. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's also new people I've never seen before. Hey. If, if you're all new viewers, which you, there's a lot in here tonight, would you please subscribe to my channel? I'd appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to give a like. I, I unlock the button. Um, I would appreciate if, if you would all give me a, a like if you like the show. Uh, what do you think, um, Antonio, uh, that book that he wrote, I, I'm really interested about the aliens. If they are visiting us, how can they breathe? How can they come here? Uh, that sounds like a really good show. What do you guys think? <laughs> Thanks, Chrissy. Chipper. Okay, so can I can I start with the, the shout-outs? And gosh, and I'm really sorry if I... Um, if I missed anyone, I, all, all of a sudden I'm seeing names I've never seen before. Okay, so there, there there's uh, Michael, Medra, Jennifer, Royce, Danny, Night Lover, Ginger, Paragoster, Derek, Da, Fook, Ryan, Mary, uh, Jay, KP Paranormal, Lisa, Scary Larry. Chipper, Winter Sky, Whitney V, DJ Lights was there. Uh, the Unseen, Lynn B Singer, Lily, F Warrior, Chrissy, Aaron, Rick, Carol, Kathy, Q W Y Z L, Matthew, Bree. Oh, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Oh, gosh, Nicole and Shelly. Uh, did I say Ryan? There's Ryan Zinky. Oh my gosh. You guys are all new. I didn't see you last time, but I wasn't really watching the chat last week. Are you guys all new? Hey, if you if you like my show, would you please subscribe? I'd really appreciate it. I do the live shows every Thursday. I'm telling you, I don't have my February calendar, but I've got some fabulous shows lined up. I'm booked, um, I'm starting to uh, book into May now. And the, oh, and, oh, there's Antonio. Good night, Antonio. <laughs> oh, Chrissy AG. I didn't call you. And Jean, Jen Lorino, Whitney, Vin, Whitney, Vin, uh, Van Slyke. And Ryan Kirkwood and Tucker Brown. Oh my God, where'd you guys all come from? Zinky Bones. I never and Jesse. Wow, and Tucker Brown. Where did you guys all? I never saw you before. Thanks for joining the chat. Oh, I'm glad you liked the show. Hey, that was pretty good. You know, there really isn't that much information about the Skinwalker Ranch. And I thought, what a what a great guest to have would be Antonio because it's not going to be any fakery with with Antonio. Um. Okay. Oh my God. Guess what? Uh, I, on my Facebook page, and I'll post it on Google. 
uh, Anthony Sanchez, you know, our buddy Anthony Chan Sanchez, who um, created... Oh, Aaron. Did I say Aaron? And Derek? Um, Anthony Sanchez is the one who has created, for all those who may not know, uh, the ghost apps. Go, let's see, ghosthunterapps.com. Uh, he's he's amazing. He's getting so well known. Anyway, um, he had a, a, a box built. Oh, gosh, we're going to use it. Uh, it's posted on my Facebook page. Anyway, Anthony has a, a, a real demon doll. Every time... He, we've had it twice on the show on our ITC sessions with the ghost apps. And every time, um, hi Lisa, and every time, um, every time he brings that, 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 that doll on, oh my God, he gets attacked. I swear. And it's not phony. It's true. And so we're going to do an ITC session called the demon doll. It'll be Dave and myself and Anthony. We are the, we are the, the paranormal ghost apps team and uh we're gonna make the announcement when the hi scary larry when um and qwyz hi and then when so when t when um dave gets back he'll be back next week we'll announce uh, oh my god jay oh god i almost lost my microphone um jay loreno and okay did i say hi to everybody yeah, the doll is really creepy. Anyway, so we're going to do an ITC session with this new uh, ghost box that uh, Anthony had built especially for him. It's really freaky. So we're going to start a new... Um, we're going to be start we're going to start doing that. It's going to be an extra show. I don't know if we're going to do it weekly or every two weeks, but it'll be uh, uh, around, around the demon doll. It'll be... A demon ITC be interesting and uh, the last time that we did an uh, ITC um, Anthony brought the doll out I asked him to bring it out and on the ghost box Dave and Anthony both said good night to the demon doll and the ghost box responded good night <laughs> they freaked out <laughs> that was so much fun so um anybody anyway um Oh, I missed somebody. Who did I miss? Oh, gosh. M McDeb33, I'm sorry. Anybody else that I missed? I, I would love... Yeah, F Warrior. And I did F Warrior. Um, no, it's just... It's it's no... It's just Anthony. It, it, no, no, no more Nikki and Cindy. It's just me... Dave and Anthony, and it's a long story, but anyway, it's just the three of us. So, um, Jen Treasure, Jen Treasure Trove. Okay, so, um, you guys have any questions? I, I don't know what else to say. I, I didn't bring my February calendar with me. All I can tell you is I have some awesome shows lined up. I am so excited. I'm really excited, too, about next week uh, with the Bell Witch. I'm really excited about that. Um, there are Native Americans buried in that uh, in that cave. And, the sh and um, uh, Willie Windwalker is of, a, of the Cherokee uh, tribe. And uh, he's a shaman and should be a good show. Should be a good show. Oh, I love you too. You guys, I love you all. And I'm th and Aaron's new too. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me each week. Uh, look like we had a good chat room tonight. 52 people are watching now. I don't know how look, We had a nice big crowd. But anyway, please subscribe. Give my show a like. I'd really appreciate it. Um, there, yeah, I, I don't want to say anything more about the likes. I, I'm not going to give them any attention on the dislikes. So, um, is there any questions? Oh, Renee. Oh, my God. I didn't see you, Renee. I'm sorry. Did I miss anybody else? <coughs> anybody else? <laughs> 
Oh, I I tried, Royce. I believe me, I have sent him so many messages, and he he doesn't respond to me. He doesn't respond to me. I would love to do a show on that. And An Ansley, I did. I missed you too. Um, I can I can possibly find somebody else to do the uh, people that are missing. Um, in the in the uh, national forest, I, I've been searching for someone else to do that show with me. Oh, thank you. Well, anything else? You guys have any other questions? Hope you all have a great weekend. Don't forget two shows next week. Uh, Thursday and Saturday. Yes, I have seen. Yes, I have seen a UFO. I've seen it twice. I was up at my sister's. Uh, she used to live up in the mountains in um, uh, in Arnold, California, up in the gold country. Way up. she was, I think she was like uh, four thousand elevation. And we were out on her on the front porch. It was dark, and you know you can really see the stars when you get up into that elevation. And we just happened to be. We said, okay, let's look at the sky. Let's look at the sky, having our coffee. And oh my God, there was a, a white light and and it, it came, it was coming across like this, but it wasn't traveling s slow. It was going kind of fast. And then all of a sudden it zigged off of this way and then it came back this way and then it went that way. And we go, oh my God that's got to be a UFO. And we sat there and we looked and it came back again. It came and it kept zigzagging and then it flew off. And we did report that to MUFON. We did, we, we did make a report. And then, um, there was another area, um, Rollins Lake. Oh, it's up toward Nevada. It's a Oh my God! It's one of our favorite places to vacation, and um, we were we were all out, and and it wasn't just us. There was like eight other people, and we were all looking up at the sky because we were seeing something really strange, and it had all these different green and blue and yellow, all these different kind of lights, and it didn't make any sense. I have never seen anything like that. And um, we all agreed it, it was probably a UFO. And I've seen that twice up in that area, twice. And then, you know, we went, we went to Willow Creek. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Willow Creek. But anyway, it's a town uh, up north. And um, it's, it's known for Bigfoot. And they've got this. They they've got this big, huge wooden statue of uh, of Bigfoot in their town because I mean that's that's what they're known for. Oh, maybe about six years ago, my sister and my husband and her husband we drove up there. It's like a it's like a five hour drive from here, but the country is. Oh my God! It's like Washington. It's absolutely amazing, and we actually we actually were going up there to look for Bigfoot. And the thing is that weekend that we went, they had the big, huge forest fire, and we didn't know it. And the lady at the hotel never called us to tell us there was a huge fire, and it it was like uh, it was so bad. It was like going into a fog. And it hurt your eyes really bad. And uh, well, we when we got there, we were really upset because she didn't tell us. But our intent was to go look for Bigfoot. But of course, we never did. It, it was it was bad. We um, we only stayed overnight. And but we did go to the Indian reservation and buy um, um, a prime rib. It was the best best prime rib um, best prime rib I ever had. Um, Janet W. Hi, honey. Yeah, oh, you're late. Okay, guys. Um, I, I don't know what else to, um, I don't have anything else to talk about unless you have a question. Oh, Melissa. Oh, hi. Did I forget to say hi to anybody? I said ginger and yeah. Did I miss anybody? Type it in. 
Yeah, sorry, sorry, Janet. I'm I'm ready to to uh, say good night to everybody. Tonight's um, I think tonight is uh, um, American Idol is on again tonight. I'm hoping it is. Oh yeah, the meat that you buy from the American from the American Indian Reservation, it's like nothing. Nothing you could ever get anywhere. I would love to take that trip again uh, up there. It's it's absolutely amazing. And actually, um, we have Bigfoot. Uh, he's been seen in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is about an hour and a half from here. <clears throat> My uh, sister-in-law has uh, a house up in uh, Dooney, Dooney Burke. Dooney, Bonnie, Bonnie Dune. Uh, it's up uh, towards Santa Cruz. And it's also by the... Um, by Fulton and by Brookdale Lodge. And um, so uh, I'd like to go back to, hey, you know what, Dave and I have some good stuff happening. Um, and we'll, we'll tell you about it when it happens. Um, he's gonna be on some amazing, amazing investigations. You are going to flip when you find out where he's going. And we're gonna do a pre-show with me live from his locations and then he'll go on to do his uh, paranormal investigations but i'm really excited about that that he's including me in that and that should be fun um but he's got some amazing places oh hi stephen harp you're late honey oh unless you weren't in chat but you were watching and sean hi sean um but anyway so you're gonna Wait till you find out the locations that Dave is going to. It's going to be absolutely. And for Halloween, oh my God. I'm so tempted to fly down there. Oh my God. You're, oh, you're going to flip out. It's going, I'm so excited for Dave. I can't stand it. And he's going to have an amazing time. John Zaffis loves Dave and, and, and George and, and Andrea. They just love Dave. And he, Dave is one of the nicest guys I've ever known. So, um, anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, Janet, I was telling everybody, um, I got two shows planned for next week, Thursday and, um, Saturday. And I, I post them, I, I post them in Google Plus and I post them uh, on Facebook page as well. Um, so, yeah, Dave's my buddy. Um, we became instant friends, um, oh gosh, a year and a half ago when, when we went to the, um, oh, in West, um, in, to Virginia City in Nevada when we went on that, uh, when we went to the uh, St. Mary's conference, uh, we, we came, yeah, Dave rocks. We became instant friends. Yeah. And, and Anthony Sanchez, our dear friend, I, I've known San Anthony for some time and I just love Anthony. So the three of us have really bonded. Well, you guys, um, Lisa Bevan, did I say hi to you before? I'm going to say goodnight. Okay, guys, I'm going to say goodnight. And um, I want to thank you so much for being here. It's I think everything went really smoothly uh, tonight in the chat. And um, I, I just love you guys. And I just thank you. Thank you so much. My channel is just growing like crazy. I I never expected it to grow this fast. And it's all because of you. And and, and I really appreciate all of you. I really do. Um, and I, I'm hoping to keep our chat room lovely just the way it is. No more, no more, um, no more bashing. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving each other the respect. Oh, Par Paragon, Shift Paranormal, hi. Um, so everybody, thank you for giving each other love and respect in the chat room because that's what we're all about. That's all I want for all, all of us to get along and to be happy and, um, okay. Anyway, thank you everybody. Thank you so much. I love you guys. And don't forget, I'll see you next Thursday, okay? Good night everyone. Thank you.